So first is, I want to apologize in advance. Uh, 30 days ago, I had surgery on my knee, and I have oxycontin in my system. So if there's anything that I say that doesn't make any sense at all or seems unreasonable, I'm going to blame it on the drugs, okay? Anyway, my name is Jeffrey Edel. I'm the chairman and CEO of MeWe. And it's really interesting, and it's going to affect everybody in this room, is that MeWe is a Web2 app. And you probably wonder, like, why am I here if I'm running a Web2 app? And MeWe has been around for a long time. It's a social platform. We have 20 million users on MeWe to date. We're in 600, and we have 630,000 groups. These are communities that will be very, very vibrant when they go to Web3. We're in 20 different languages in 150 countries, and we're mostly overseas. So we're about 40% US and, say, 60% overseas. And what we want to do, and what we are doing, it's a little bit different of a project because we are actually now bringing this Web2 app to Web3. So this is something that is exciting, it's new, and it's actually happening. Now, if you've listened to Gavin talk, you know, he always talks about, I don't really care about truth, I care about fact, or I care about a reality. And don't trust me, it's the truth, actually. Don't trust me, it's the truth. And what MeWe's been doing, MeWe is a privacy-first network. We're just like Facebook in many ways, but we're not centralized like they are. We don't have algorithms, we don't serve ads, there's no BS, there's no amplification. And so I like to think of what MeWe's been doing since 2016, is been building an application that's gonna change the world. Years ago, Mark Zuckerberg stood up on stage and he said, privacy is the thing of the past. It's not gonna exist anymore for anybody. And we kind of looked at it and said, no, 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 that's not true. There's going to come a day and time and an age where people are going to be very, very concerned with privacy. I mean, who, you guys are younger, you have kids too, friends, relationships. Your kids go on these social media apps, and what happens? Amplification, divisiveness occurs, this centralized corporate surveillance where ads are served to you all the time. So, all right, I'm not going to embarrass anybody here, but uh, just raise your hand if you use a social media app. And I'm not counting Telegram or WeChat or WhatsApp or any of that. So one person in the whole audience, that's good. Now, come on. And how many of you have used Facebook? We'll, we'll say that name, Facebook. All right, so you all use it. Now, just imagine an application that when you develop your communities and you develop all the people that you want to share photos and information with in clubs, just imagine you got directly to those people and you didn't have to pay to have algorithms change things. That's what MeWe is all about. So about um, a year and a half ago, Frank McCourt, for those of you who know him, Frank McCourt was the owner of the Dodgers and he also owns the OM soccer club in um, Marseille, France. Frank and Braxton Woodham, who you'll meet in a little while, they came up with this concept of a social web to change the world. And they talked about a movement, a technology, and a standard of governance that fits in perfectly with decentralization. I read their paper, Project Liberty, their white paper, and I thought, how perfect would it be to align MeWe with what is happening there? So they've developed Frequency, which is a layer one application, a parachain, one of 80 or so that sits in the polka dot world. And we're integrated into frequency. And what that does, and it's really exciting for all of the apps that are going to be on the platform, all the parachains, is your social graph now is your own. It's not just, again, just trust me that I won't sell your data and information as a social network. What it is, is you then are going to be given a universal handle, a universal login. And that login is going to help you develop your social graph and it'll be interoperable across all the applications that will exist on the chain and this series of chains. 
That is the key. So right now, we have, in beta testing, as of a few weeks ago at Consensus, we had hundreds of people move over. Now we're moving thousands over, and in the next six months, or six to nine months, we hope to have several million people moved over. So we will be, that's our projection, is we will be the largest social network on frequency, which is then on Polkadot. And again, this is gonna affect everybody because I'm looking for all the Web3 app developers that wanna be a part of this, that wanna get involved in the MeWe communities. It could be something fun and interesting. And again, because remember, Web3 to the normal person is just looked at as crypto, it's DeFi. And I think to jumpstart this, to have Web2 apps that see the opportunity here that move over, that's gonna be where the growth is gonna occur in this world. So, like I mentioned earlier, when you log on, and there'll be a QR code you'll see at the end, and there's a QR code you saw at the beginning, you're going to get your special handle. And it was interesting because I was on a panel uh, at Consensus, and uh, the lawyer, Patrick, who was sitting next to me, all he could think about was getting his unique handle. It was like the coolest thing. So you will get your own handle, and this handle will allow you to be interoperable across all the apps on the platform. And everybody knows the market effect of social networks, the growth opportunity in networking. And so MeWe hopes to take this community-based system and really grow from there. Again, the, this is all part of the new social web. It's really critical, it's gonna be really important to Polkadot and the world that we're all sitting in right now is again, just imagine 20 million people that we can get our hands on and slowly migrate them and move them over to Web3 and show them the ways of Web3, how it impacts their privacy, it protects it, protects their data, protects their information, and finally allows them to own their own information and content and we can help them monetize it because it's not us, the central government, if you will the corporate surveillance type apps like Facebook, they shouldn't be owning or controlling this data information, you should. So at this point in time, a key partner of ours I'd like to bring on, I don't know if he's coming stage left or stage right, but Braxton Woodham, who's the president of Amplica Labs, I'd love for you to all welcome him to the stage. Braxton is one of the creators and developers of the Frequency Project for Polkadot the Parachain. Braxton, come up and join me, and I can limp off. There you go. Thank you, man. Hey, how's it going? Thanks, Jeffrey. Um, these guys have taken like a huge, huge bold step uh, here this year to connect up with what we built with Frequency, our parachain, and uh, building this bridge from kind of the, the world of Web 2 to the world of Web 3 and decentralizing you know, a network of upwards of 20 million people um, built over years, kind of in the, what I think of as, as the old world. Let me see how this clicker, clicker works. Um, we uh, really think this is critical for uh, a number of reasons, but I think we all know at this point that we live in a really fraught age where we're seeing the current global network that we all share driving disinformation, polarization, a lot, of, a lot of confusion, a lot of chaos. And uh, we really need to move to a world where a, a lot of things are different. Uh, three, three things that we think are important. One, we should know that we're talking to a real person or to an AI-driven bot, but we should know which is the case at, at a given time. Two, we should be able to know that when we're watching a video or looking at pictures that we know it's actually been doctored or changed as a deep fake or that it's actually the original content that comes straight from a phone or camera. And three, we should participate in this massive data economy where we're all creating this trove of data and consuming it every day. And so we all need to be in this world where this happens. And to do that, we need to migrate people at scale. And so. Miwi and Jeffrey here is driving kind of the first wave of this migration. And this problem I'm talking about and the vision I just laid out, I think a lot of people see it and we're starting to see a lot of solutions emerge. 
um, if you illustrate here, to kind of move away from the, the oligarchy of big tech that currently uh, controls all of our relationships online with private platforms. Um, so we're moving away from the control of Elon and Mark Zuckerberg, but a lot of the solutions really concern us because taking a federated approach, like we see with Mastodon, moves us to a world of a thousand Elons, which we think is not necessarily a lot better than how we live today. We really believe we need to move to a world that's fully decentralized as far as the network goes, and we have self-sovereign IDs and full control over our relationships and the way we communicate. And so for that, we've, we've constructed a core protocol, DSMP, Decentralized Social Networking Protocol, and then we created Frequency, this parachain, to, to make it a reality. And we see it as an evolution of the way the internet has developed. So first you had the, the internet itself connecting the world's computers um, that centered around the TCP IP protocol suite. And then over time, Tim Berners-Lee introduced another protocol, HTTP, to connect the data and link the data that's you know, flowing across all of these computers. But we need to link all of the people that are generating this data and communicating over these networks, and that's the focus of DSMP and frequency. And once that exists, let me go backwards here if I can. Um, once that exists, you have this global social network that no one controls, and it's much bigger than frequency. So all these little squares here, to me, represent other very complex problems that we need to solve collectively. All of us need to work together to solve um, moderation, curation, and discovery algorithms, um, reputation management, just how we all interact. So we really need to work with everyone in this room to make this a reality. And uh, we've started that with Kilt. I don't know if Ingo is here, but our first parachain partnership, and we plan to increase kind of that rate of partnerships here over the coming year. So hopefully we'll be talking to a few of you here today. Um, but along with the, the development side and all the developers joining in, we really need people at scale. That's what's going to drive the change fundamentally. And so starting with, with MeWe, but then moving on from there to other communities, whether it's in sports or entertainment or media, to bring everyone over in time. But I want people here to think about the scale we're talking about. So um, Andreessen Horowitz just recently tracked uh, active wallets earlier this year. I think it was around uh, 15 million active wallets back in April, and uh, monthly active wallets. And a lot of those, as you all know, are duplicates because people have multiple wallets. We're talking about you know, maybe 10 million people. We're talking about bringing a million actives over the next few quarters. So. This is a fundamental sea change in what's going to happen in Web3 uh, right now, this bridge we're building uh, to bring people over at scale. So I want to thank Jeffrey again and the whole MeWe team. I know some folks are here for driving this huge, huge step to bring people over this bridge into this, this world of Web3. So thanks, Jeffrey. All right, thank you, Brian. Here's your thing back. You could stay here. Stay? Oh. You know. So, like I said, this is live, it's real, it's right now. This is not just a project that's being developed or anything like that, it is evolving. But you can literally put your phone up here, it sounds like I'm raising money for a charity or something, and click on the QR code with your camera and you could sign up for MeWe and Web3. Your experience in MeWe and Web3 would be the same as it would be in Web2. It's discover, it's a social network, establish your own communities, and have fun and enjoy. But like Braxton said, this is a material sea change. And we're taking a big risk, and like I always say is, I like being the pioneer, but I don't want to be the one that's slaughtered on my way to California. I want to be the one that gets there and we all could get the gold. So this is for society, it's for the world. It's really a, a positive thing for your, your kids and legacy, and it's a time that we need to make this change in the world of social media and social web. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.